The Penn BBS 500 is a spring-loaded piston filler that's mostly made out of acrylic. It's available in a wide variety of finishes. The one that we have here is called clear glass for obvious reasons. The bottom finial is flat and it has a dome-shaped piston knob at the top of it. And we'll get back to that in just a moment. And the top finial is also flat with a dome shape punched into the middle. The top finial profile is concave in shape. And then we have the classic Pen BBS sword style clip, which is springy and functional. The cap is mostly straight down to a very wide cap band, which reads Pen BBS 500. The cap is flush with the pen body and it comes off in one, two, and about a quarter turns, which does run towards the high side of turns. And it reveals the standard pen BBS stainless steel nib. I have this one in fine, but it's also available in medium and extra fine. The top of the section starts with a flare up and then a long straight portion followed by a step up to another metal band. This metal band reads made in China, Shanghai. We then have threads which are smooth to the touch and then a step up to the barrel. The barrel is then mostly straight down to this portion where we have a step down right before our end finial. To operate the spring loaded piston, you need to put your finger on top of this polished finish and give it a twist. It can be a little bit difficult to get a good grip on this because it was polished. You pull the rod back and engage the piston by turning this clockwise. And then pushing down on this rod, you're able to extend the piston and draw a pink. Twist the rod counterclockwise to disengage the piston and push it back down and then turn it clockwise to secure it in place. In the hand, the pen is comfortable, well weighted due to the piston mechanism, but also well balanced. The cap does not post, which is surprising considering the step down in the back. And the section is very long, but comfortable. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Pen BBS 500, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Disassembling the Pen BBS 500 cap and screws. There isn't a cap liner, just a little step in the middle to help seal the nib. Um, but if you want, you can disassemble this further. The top finial just unscrews. And with it comes the clip. Next, we can unscrew the section from the barrel. At the bottom of the section, we do have a little O-ring. It's good to add silicone grease to that to help prevent leaks. And then the nib and feed can be unscrewed from the section. The nib and feed are held together by this collar. I'm gonna leave it there for now, but if you want, you could pull them right out. And then we have the filling mechanism and the barrel. To take the filling mechanism out, you're gonna to wanna to grab a hold at the edges of the back finial and give it a twist. It is a very small lip to get a hold of. If you're having trouble, you can also grab some rubber gripping material to get a good grip. And then the whole thing gets pulled right out. And then we have an empty barrel. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, we'll start with the barrel and the filling mechanism. The filling mechanism gets slide in place. And then we screw down the back of it in the same manner of disassembly. Good. Next, we'll do our section with our nib and feed. Before recording this video, I did make a post on our community page because I was considering making a nib swap and the popular vote was for this, the FPR or Fountain Pen Revolution uh, Architect Grind. 
you can buy the feeds and collars as part of a grab bag of mixed parts that PenBBS sells. And I'll post a link in the description below uh, for the Etsy shop where you can buy that. That will just get screwed into the section and then the section can get screwed onto the barrel. And then lastly, we have our cap. If you look closely at the top of the cap, there's a little um, cutout for the clip to go through. So we'll try and line that up the best we can. And then we'll just screw on our top finial. That whole thing gets screwed in to the pen. And we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Pen BBS 500, today I selected Aroshizuku Kujaku, which is a nice teal ink. Unscrew the cap. And for the pen, cap also unscrews. Put your finger over the back piston knob, give it a twist, and then extend it and turn it clockwise to engage the piston. Perfect. Submerge the nib into ink, extend the piston down, and slowly release to bring up ink. We'll do it a couple times. Maybe one more time. That looks like a nice full fill. Go ahead and wipe off the excess ink. the cap on the bottle and the nib. Unscrew the piston knob and then screw that knob back down to lock it in place. And now we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Pen BBS 500. Cap unscrews and it does not post. Our nib is the FPR Architect. And it's a stainless steel. And it is very well tuned. It's super smooth with just a little bit of feedback. Um, an excellent writer for our ink. We have a Roshizuku. Ku Jaku. For line variation, I'm not gonna attempt to flex this nib. It's not meant to be flexed. Where your line variation really comes from, especially with this architect grind, is in your up and down strokes. You'll have thin vertical stri strokes and thick horizontal strokes. I'll show you that one more time. For reverse writing, it's actually pretty smooth. It's definitely more scratchy than uh, the front way up, but you could get a, uh, a thinner stroke using reverse writing. And that really makes this pen, or this nib, I should say, very versatile. You can go from a very thin reverse right line to a slightly thicker vertical stroke to an even wider horizontal stroke. That's a lot of line variation to get from one nib. So what do I think of the Pen BBS 500? It's a very unique pen. The filling mechanism is great if you love gadgets, if you love being able to extend and retract different items or just fidget with things. The ink supply or capacity is really excellent. I've seen people measure it online at about two milliliters, which is, you know, a ton of ink. Um, the 
section, as I mentioned, is extremely comfortable. It's long, so if you have, you know, bigger hands, you can easily place them wherever you need to on this pen. And as I mentioned with the nib, I really enjoy it. It's an excellent writing nib. I tend to write a little bit um, at an extreme angle. So most people, when they're writing, might be more like this and get a proper architect style uh, line variation. But me, writing almost at a 90 degree gives me a stub-like writing experience, which I really enjoy. In terms of areas where this pen can be improved, there are a few. Um, number one, and probably the most annoying, is the lack of posting. I really don't understand why they introduced this step down. It uh, Visually, it looks a little strange, and the only reason that it would make sense is if you were able to post all the way down on the cap, but unfortunately you can't. So I would have rather them just extend the um, diameter of the barrel all the way to the end. Besides that, the only other complaint that I really have is the finish on both the finial and the piston knob. It's very difficult to get a good grip on this piston knob, especially if you have oily fingers. I am able to manage it after one or two tries, but I could see a lot of people having an issue with that. I would have preferred it if they um, either did a laser engraving, kind of similar to what they did on the 499 that I recently reviewed, or just added some sort of texture to give you, you know, some friction and grip. The other part is disassembling and trying to get a hold of this very thin flange at the side. It is very hard to do that. I would have preferred if they made this flange a little bit thicker so you get a better grip and also maybe add a knurling texture similar to what we have here on the center band of this Moonman A1. I think that would have really improved the experience of using this pen. But besides that, it's an excellent writer. It's well balanced and comfortable in the hand. The ink supply is very generous. Um, I have reviewed other pen BBS nibs and their nibs are really well tuned and fun to write with. But as I showed, they're also very easy to swap out with other number six size steel nibs, steel or gold, I should say. So with all that being said, I think this is a great pen to have in your collection, a very unique filling system that seems like it's pretty bulletproof and should last you a very long time and a great writer for, you know, extended journaling or long writing sessions of any sort. And that just leaves me to say, thank you for watching.